Good morning or good afternoon or good evening whenever you're watching this if you're watching later on but good morning to those of us who have gathered. Welcome to our service of morning worship this morning for the Wednesday of the week before um, Holy Week, Passion Week I should say. So I'm going to start with some uh, words from Acts as we bring ourselves together and then spend a moment in silence before we start our service. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Awe was upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had things in common. Let's spend a moment in quiet as we think about our church dispersed for the moment, but still together. Today we're using the Iona service in our service books, which starts on page 20. Be still and listen to the day. Touch the breeze with the quiet of your soul. Let the turbulence of the hurly-burly rushing pass you by. Let God bless you with a quiet whisper, which in all the day's doing keeps a calm, silent centre in your being. Let us open our lives to God and ask his forgiveness and grace. On the poverty of our seeing and the poverty of our believing, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On the poverty of our giving and on the poverty of our following, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On the poverty of our loving and the poverty of our living, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To all who turn to him, Christ says, your sins are forgiven. He also says, follow me. Thanks be Amen. to God. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O Lord, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm for today will appear on your screens, but if you have your Bible handy, it's Psalm 145, verses 8 to 18. And we say this together. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty act and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the, satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call him, to all who call on him in truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
now Veronica will bring us our first reading. Reading is from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 8 to 15. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favour, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people, to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritances. To say to the captives, come out and to those in darkness, be free. They will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barren hill. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from afar, some from the north, some from the west, some from the region of Aswan. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. For the word of God in Jesus, the God's wisdom all around us. For God's word and wisdom in us, thanks be to God. Thank you, Veronica. We say together the canticle. God of the ordinary, we praise you. You take the drabness of our thoughts and brighten them into vivid imagination. You take our everyday lives and transform them into holy, precious moments. You take our meagre offerings and multiply them into an abundance of delight. Extraordinary God, you light up our thoughts, our lives, ourselves with the wonder of your call. With everything we are and have, we praise you. Amen. We have our second reading from John chapter 5, which Norma will bring to us. In his defence, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son, and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son that all may honour the Son, just as they honour the Father. Whoever does not honour the Son, does not honour the Father who sent him. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come 
when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. By myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. For the word of God in Jesus, for God's wisdom all around us. For God's word and wisdom in us, thanks be to God. Thank you, Norma. A difficult reading, and beautifully read. So I'm going to hand over to Rachel now, who will bring us a reflection this morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts always be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. Today's psalm, of which we read the middle portion and greater portion, is a gloriously all-encompassing and inclusive psalm. There is a wonderful cascade of all running right through the words, all his works, all his words, all his deeds, all peoples, all who fall, all who call out. A great sense of gathering together to a wonderful climax of God's greatness. Whilst the psalm is very inclusive in its vision, there is still a sense of tension in waiting, the shadow and awareness that there is still wickedness around. But in spite of this, at the core of the psalm, there is promise, a promise of inclusion that goes beyond the simple twofold stance of those who love the Lord and the others, the wicked. That promise comes fully into focus in Christ, who is slain in the place of the wicked. A surprising outcome that is perhaps still hard to fathom. This leads us neatly into the gospel reading and links the all of the psalm to Jesus' understanding of the way his father works. For here Jesus outlines precisely where his ministry comes from. All that he is and does reflects the glory of God. Jesus sees that God is and does the same, sees what God is and does the same. The passage from John comes after Jesus curing of the man at the pool. The Jews had confronted Jesus because firstly, he worked a miracle on the Sabbath and secondly, he called God his father. Today we hear the answer that Jesus gave to defend himself. He tells us who he is and how he works for and with his father. Their unity in and through the Holy Spirit is the greatest mystery of the love of God and the unity of the three persons. We may not be inclined to think of God as always working, but he is ever at his task. Directing our world is enormous and complicated. God's son on earth was busy too, but never acted on his own. He only did what the father indicated him to do. This is partly why he could say that the father and I are one in John 10. Similarly, a basic question for all of us should always be, what does God want me to do? This is a question that holds its challenges. It can be hard to give over control and open ourselves up to God's will but we are in, in safe hands. We know that we will always get things wrong sometimes, but God is working alongside us if we are seeking to join in with what he is doing. And then the tricky subject of judgment raises its head. The creator has handed all judgment to his son. 
This means that the words that Jesus speaks judge us. We need to listen to them, accept them deeply and live by them. They show us up how good or how insensitive and erring we are. The relationship between Jesus and his heavenly father is the topic in this enigmatic and difficult passage. Jesus traces everything in his being and in his choices to their source in the Father. I can do nothing on my own. I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. He and his Father are intertwined in every way, so much so that they are one. Honour Jesus and you will be honouring the Father. That's a striking statement. My father is still working and I am also working. God is present among us, Emmanuel. But this is not a passive presence, only simply of being. This is an active presence through which God is involved in the drama of our lives because he loves us so. Saint Ignatius Loyola used to say that the Lord is ever labouring on our behalf. God is always with us and we always have a part to play for his kingdom where we are. It's a rather lovely thought to think that we are always in the right place at the right time as far as God is concerned. I guess the problem is we sometimes really can't understand how that could be. We have difficulties and problems and often don't feel equal to whatever we are facing. We shall see in just a few weeks as Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane that even for the Son of God things weren't easy. On Good Friday we will remember again that actually Jesus was prepared to give everything on behalf of his Father because God so loved the world. God is always at work for all people, all his people, all of us. What are we prepared to give? I think the answer is to be found in the carol in the bleak midwinter and the last verse. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him, give my heart. If we do this, we are not only in the right place at the right time, but also ready to do what God wants. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. An awful lot to take in from the readings and from the word that Rachel's brought us this morning. I'm going to suggest that we spend just a few moments in quiet, reflecting on the coming weeks and how much of our hearts we've actually given to God. As we continue to reflect, we say together the creed, the statement of that which we believe in. We believe in God, the maker and shaper of our pathways, who sent Jesus to show us the narrow way and who is the beginning and ending of our traveling. We believe in Jesus Christ, the sharer of our flesh, who entered and experienced the human journey and who walks beside us on the road. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the midwife and nurturer of our potential, who drove Jesus into the desert and who calls us now to cast off from the shore. We believe in Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the shaper, sharer and stirrer of our journeys, and we recommit ourselves to following their way. Amen.
we commit ourselves to God, the shaper, sharer and stirrer of our journeys. As we say, the collect for this week. Merciful Lord, absolve your people from their offences, that through your bountiful goodness, we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, Alison will lead us in our intercessions. So let us pray with confidence to the Lord who is near to all who call on him in truth. We pray today for our mother, the church, and for our church family here at St. Peter's and in the Methodist and Catholic churches. We ask for your blessing on all Christians throughout the world, particularly those persecuted for their faith. We pray for those who are new to faith, and for those who no longer walk with you. We thank you for the example of those whose faith shines out in their lives. Show us what you would have us to do and strengthen us so that we may serve you faithfully all our lives. Help us to show to others that forgiveness which comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. We pray for all parts of your world that are torn apart by hatred and violence, disease or famine. We pray for an end to war and a deeper commitment to peace so that all families everywhere may live together in safety and without fear. We pray for our country and for its leaders asking that they may hear your voice and act responsibly and fairly for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. We pray for our families, our friends, and for all those who are dear to us, for those we can see and for those far away. We pray for all children, particularly those in our church family, asking that they may grow up strong in the faith of your church. We pray for children who do not know the love of a mother or the support of a family. Guard and protect them all and bring them the joy that comes from the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. Let us remember those who have woken up to another day filled with pain. We pray for those who long for someone to spend time with them. May we notice when our help is needed and be willing to give it. Today we pray for your healing power for anyone we know, for those on our traffic light list, and quietly by name for anyone in our families or known to us who is sick or suffering in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. We remember that Jesus' mother was with him as he died on the cross. We pray for all who mourn and for those they love and miss, commending all who have died into God's loving arms. Today we remember Di Silverwood, Peter Longworth, David Ingram, Sandra, David McNally, Edward Potter, David Denton and Sarah Everard. May they see your face and be happy forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And in a, in a few moments of quiet, let us bring our own particular petitions and requests to God. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Alison going to sing together before the blessing may the peace of the lord christ go with you i suggest that you run your eyes around the screen so that we sing it to each other Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and keep you all safe this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Norma. Send us out, send us out to seek wisdom. Send us out in peace. Send us out, send us out to do justice. Send us out in hope. Send us out, send us out to be loving. Send us out in joy. Go now with God's blessing, go in justice and love. Go and love your neighbour. Go and respect the earth. Go and befriend strangers. Go and make peace. Go in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you for coming this morning. Our virtual doors will be open to everyone again on Sunday and you can find other ways to pray and worship on a church near you on our website and on the radio and on the TV. So until next time we meet together, 
stay safe and stay healthy. God bless and we'll see you soon.